Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course, and this module is on configuring IPv4. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at how we can go into the Windows 7 operating system and configure everything we need to know to facilitate IPv4 communication. You may want to go back to our previous video before addressing this one and have a look at all of the different IPv4 technologies available to you. We're going to be using a lot of those in this video because we're going to talk about configuring name resolution and connecting up network pieces and understanding the addressing and really getting IPv4 to work properly when we're using the Windows 7 operating system. A lot of the configurations that we're going to do for IPv4 when we're working inside of the Windows 7 GUI can be found in the local area connection properties. And you can find those in the Control Panel, Network, and Sharing Center, Change Adapter Settings, and we'll right mouse click on the adapter and choose Properties. And when you do that, you'll see there's a number of different items that usually come up for that particular connection. We're going to focus our efforts here on this video under the Internet Protocol version 4 or TCP IP v4 configuration that's right in here. If you were to select that IPv4 setting, you would see this properties page come up where I can obtain an IP address automatically and obtain a DNS server address automatically as the defaults. And this is using DHCP, that dynamic host configuration protocol, to be able to automatically assign this. But if we wanted to manually assign an IP address, we would simply press the radio button and we can put our address in here. We could also push the radio button for DNS server addresses and manually configure DNS server servers as well. So if we configure these manually, we're going to have to type all that information in. You can start to see why DHCP is so useful. You can also do this at the command line. We don't always have the luxury of using the GUI, especially if we're doing remote communication or remote management to other devices. So fortunately, there is a NetSH, a NetShell command, where we can change interface settings for IPv4, and we can set all of these right there at the command line. Here's our Windows 7 computer. Let's look at the Internet Protocol version 4 configuration on here. I'm going to go to my Start menu and go to our Control Panel. I'm viewing this as large icons, which allows me to see the Network and Sharing Center right here. Here's all of our networking information. And if I want to look at the adapter settings, I can ch click Change Adapter Settings, right mouse click on the adapter, and choose Properties. And here we are at that Properties setting for that adapter. And right here is the Internet Protocol version 4, or TCP IP v4. If I double click, you can see the settings that we currently have in here for this IP address. You can see it's currently set to obtain an IP address automatically or obtain a DNS server address automatically. It does both of those. And I can choose whether I would like to obtain an IP address automatically or whether I'd like to manually assign an IP address. And I can independently also automatically or manually assign DNS server addresses in here as well. So you've got some options available right here in the GUI. If you need to change it, you can go right to that configuration and make those updates to it. But sometimes you don't have access to the GUI, so you can do that all at the command line as well. From the command line, I'm going to go right to a CMD and bring up that command prompt. All the commands that we're going to use are the NetSH commands. And I'm going to choose the interface IPv4 commands. And there is one where I can show the interfaces. There's the interfaces on my computer. Here's one called Local Area Connection. That's the one that I am going to change. That's an important name to know because we're going to use that when we make those changes to this. I can also show IP addresses and hit Enter. And you can see I do currently have an automatically assigned 192.168.0.16, and that was assigned via DHCP. So now I'd like to manually set some IP addresses in here. So I'm going to do a NetSH on an interface and choose the IPv4 set address command. And I first have to specify the name of the interface. And in my case, the name is local area connection. And now I'm going to put a static address in here of 192.168.0. We'll choose 55. And then I can put the subnet mask that I would like to have in there. And then I can also put 
0.1 to specify my default gateway. So we simply put all three of those things in, one after the other, and we hit Enter. And it tells us, well, nothing. It really just gave us back a prompt. But it didn't tell us there was an error. So in fact, if I go back to my GUI and I look at my properties under IPv4, you can see it assigned exactly what we just put in there. Makes it very, very easy to configure these things right at the command line. And if we were to back up a two and show uh, the IP addresses, there it is. In fact, it's updated right here in my command line view as well. It's just that easy to go in and make these configuration changes, whether you're using the graph front end to do it, or using the net sh command at the command line. If you're having problems communicating out over the network, there's some simple troubleshooting that we can do to help understand where the breakdown might be occurring. The first place to check is the physical connectivity of your network. Do we have a physical network connection plugging into your computer? This might be over a wireless connection. and In that case, obviously, there is no physical plug. But if there is a physical Ethernet connection, you can look for the lights that show that there's signal on that particular link. And there may be blinking lights on there as well to tell you there's maybe traffic going across that connection. If you've got lights and you've got blinking, then at least we know physically we're connected to a device on the other side. So at that point, we can look at our configurations and confirm what we're seeing. You use the ipconfig slash all command at the command line to look at all of your IP configs. You can also view them inside of the GUI as well. And we can see, it. did we get an IP address from our DHCP server? Is it an automatically assigned IP address, the 169.254 address range? That may tell us that we did not get a response from a DHCP server that we may need to understand why we can't communicate to the DHCP server. We can try it again. We can force it to do another request to DHCP by typing in ipconfig slash release and then ipconfig slash renew to renew that lease with the DHCP server. And lastly, we can start using the ping command to see exactly how far we can get. We can ping our local address. We can ping our default gateway. We can ping another IP address that might be out on the internet to see just how far we get. There's another great command called traceroute that will be able to tell us every step along the way. How far did we get in this troubleshooting process? Did we get to a certain router? Uh, that's on the internet? Did the packet never get across our local network? Maybe we're having a local problem. And at least with the traceroute command, you can see where the packets start falling off of the network and just how far you can get through there. Let's run a few of these and see what we get. We reconfigured this device to 192.168.0.55. So we should be able to ping that address. Let's see if that works, 192.168.0.55. And we are at least pinging the IP address of our local device. You can see that we did get a reply 32 bytes in length and the time to live 128, which means it did not loop around to get back to us. It's very local. It didn't even have to go to the internet or even out to the network to do that. Now, we also have a default gateway out here. Our default gateway is assigned 192.168.0.1. Let's see if we can at least ping that by typing in ping 192.168.0.1. And we're able to ping our local router as well. So we know our router at least is healthy. Maybe we can't ping out to the internet. A great ping location I like to use is Google's DNS servers because it's an easy one to remember, which is 8.8.8.8. Makes it easy. And if I hit Enter, you can see that I am able to ping Google. So at that point, I know my connectivity to the internet is very good. If I'm continuing to have problems, it's probably not related at least to connectivity, at least not the connectivity to Google. One way to also do that trace route we mentioned, if I do a trace RT, that's the trace route command in Windows to 8.8.8.8. What we'll do is see every step along the way, what router did I hit to be able to get out to Google and do that. And it doesn't just do it once. It does it three times. And then it tries to determine the DNS name of the router that's being used. And so you may not see a name come up for this. You may see IP addresses. But then it may get to a router that does actually have a name that's able to resolve in our DNS servers. And you can see, just to get between my workstation and to get to Google, Google, I'm hopping through quite a number of routers just to be able to get that far. And that's not uncommon for internet communication. You're hopping through a large number of routers, not only local to your city, but perhaps in a region of your country and maybe even somewhere else in the world just to be able to communicate back and forth to those web servers. 
for my machine to talk to that IP address, you can see we had to go through 13 different hops to finally get there. But we finally did get to 8.8.8.8. .8 obviously, this requires that we have some knowledge of the path between here and there. And obviously, over the internet, you're never quite certain the path your packets are going to take to get from one side of the internet to the other. But I at least know that my packets did at least get outside of my network. And then I can call my internet service provider and say, it got out of my network. How come it didn't get out of your network? And you can help troubleshoot from there. At least at that point, your internet service provider knows the problem is not with your computer or with your router. It's somewhere else out on the internet, and they can start addressing that issue. Let's review some of the things that we've learned in this video. Let's look at our first question, which is which utility allows you to configure network settings at the command line? It's a really useful utility. You'll use it a lot, and it's called NetSH. The next question, which utility allows you to view your IP configuration at the command line? That's one where we are able to see all of the different settings that we have for our IP configuration, and that's called IPconfig. And the last question, which troubleshooting utilities can be used to check connectivity and network path details to remote devices? There were two utilities that we used to be able to do that. One was called Ping, and the other one was called Traceroute. Well, that covers our requirements for configuring IPv4 in your Windows 7 operating system. We should now be able to grab any of our IP configurations, put it into Windows 7, and have that work properly. Thanks for joining us in this video. We've got a lot more absolutely free Microsoft videos on our website. There's message boards, and you can send me a message. Visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.